Hey guys, Spartan here. I'm here to give you a bit of advice in terms of wand construction, be it what you should have late game and what you should try and get on your way upwards. Now, this is not in any particular order, but let's just start. I'm actually going to start with a build you should probably try to attain late game instead of early game as it's impossible to get all these incredibly quickly. Well, not impossible, just highly unlikely as homing is not easily found in the early stages. So what you're going to need is a spell with a trigger, homing, a damage modifier of some sort, be it damage up, heavy shot, damaging aura, electric field, those type of things. And you want to tie it all before you get a cloud of some sort. I recommend sludge, or slime, whatever you want to call it. No, not sludge. Sludge is toxic. Slime, because it is the least deadly to you. And as you can see here, the cloud stays around for a long time, so there's plenty of opportunity to deal damage to things, despite it having a default damage stat of zero. And it's because damage field is just that good. So, well, not damage field, just any of these. Now, if you combine drilling shot with this, it becomes pretty much impossible for the good old cloud to get stuck on anything since it goes through enemies like Pierce already and it'll just drill through the ground and kill every enemy in a nice big fat radius. So a great use of this is you can see me killing this spider over here then going to kill these two horrid leaper enemies that I, nobody even really cares about just free gold at this point. So yep that is a good little introduction to the Death Cloud. Now, let me talk about a different spell you can get. Very early, in fact. This tends to spawn very early, but very rarely. Circle of Stillness. It creates a circle of freezing magic, which freezes enemies and certain liquids completely solid. Now, this doesn't seem like too good of a spell, considering the fact that, you know, the only thing it seems to be freezing is my computer. But it has a lot of uses mostly with dealing with enemies, but yeah, it's also good for destroying lava. As you can see here, the power of freezing enemies and then meleeing them immediately kills them, so despite the fact that enemy had 200 health, a good freeze and kick killed it. So enemies polymorphed, no problem. So you'd think, oh no, Temple Guardian, you can't freeze him, can you? Actually, you can. and. Freezing and kicking him is a surprisingly easy way to kill him, as he will not gain abilities later on in the game to like counter this or anything, so you can use this for pretty much the entire game as long as you have Circle of Stillness in your back pocket. Now, a more reasonable application of the freezing effect, considering the fact you won't be able to kick every single enemy to death when they're frozen, is to attach a freeze charge to a tentacle. Freeze charge is pretty much just Circle of Stillness as a modifier. Now, it's only freezing my computer currently, but Freezing enemies, of course, makes them die in one hit to melee. And tentacle counts as melee for some reason, even though it's a projectile. So let's have a little bit of a demonstration here to prove that I'm not full of garbage. And yep, Steve the Temple Guardian just commits I don't feel so good and turns to dust in front of you. Simple, easy money, tied with greed, you can just get a bunch. Now, one of the best modifiers in the game has to be explosive shot or explosive projectile. What it does is, it's very self-explanatory. It creates an explosion when your projectile hits something, or the time of your projectile runs out. And it's quite good, considering the fact that it has only one downside, considering it's so cheap. And that is that the projectile flies a fair bit slower. As you can see, this magic bolt is going at a snail's pace. Tying three to it is probably not going to be a good idea. However, the explosives are additive, meaning that adding three will of course create a huge, well, huge for a little tiny bolt. A huge explosion. That does have quite a fair bit of damage. Also, you can negate this by using a speed up power on it. So one of these wands can easily take you through late game if you have a sort of homing, but if you don't have homing, you could try lightning bolt with this. Now, Lightning Bolt is always unaffected by homing, just how it works, but Lightning Bolt by default has explosive status or properties to it. 
So adding an explosive shot to a lightning bolt will reduce its range a bit, in case you didn't want the range of lightning bolt being so long, and it just does a huge explosion already. Now of course you can add more explosive shots to these to make an even deadlier lightning bolt. As you can see, that has enough damage to probably kill most enemies in the game. Just be careful and do not add three of them to a lightning bolt without some sort of speed up as the explosion is so big and the lightning bolt travels so little that you'll just commit instant suicide. Now, you could use it on a large magic missile or something like this, but something to take into account is that it gives you the same amount of plus explosive regardless of what spell you use. It's just more noticeable with something that already has a large radius. So you could use something as simple as firebolt and it will have a huge radius. Just be careful, it still doesn't travel very far. Now, another spell that is really great is Downwards Burst Bundle. Once again, I'm using Firebolt because Firebolt will eventually travel downwards because it applies by the laws of gravity. But you can use pretty much any spell. So, what it does is it creates a nice little bundle of explosives, even if your original shot wasn't explosive at all. Sadly, it doesn't work with explosive projectile. I've tried, as it just affects the base projectile and not the ones afterwards. There's pretty much nothing that works with those little downwards bursts except for the homing perk, which you should probably pick up anyway because it's such a good perk. Now, if you want to have some real fun, you can use triplicate bolts. Now, triplicate bolts are pretty much good for every single modifier in the game because, say for example here, each little bolt from the triplicate bolt, which of course fires three off, turns into, well, 15 in this case, because I'm using three of them. But it would turn into five bursts, so you'd get 15 explosive little bursts per shot of the triplicate bolt if you have one. So, as you can see by stacking them, you can create a complete carpet bomb, and you could probably one-shot the final boss. Well, as long as you haven't collected too many orbs, that is. One thing you need to be careful of, however, is that you should not shoot upwards with this, as you will obviously die, as what goes up must come down. And this is no exception for Triplicate Bolt. And that was it. That'll be a quick, short video of me talking about a few things you can do with the wands in Noiter. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, like this video. It allows me to know that I'm doing good and I shall probably make more of the sort, such as synergies between wands. But until then, I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.